Mos A2 was an E-class submarine of the Royal Australian Navy. One of two submarines ordered for the fledgling Navy, AE2 was built by Vickers Armstrong in England and was commissioned into the RAN in 1914. Together with her sister submarine, Himasa AE1, the boat then sailed to Australia in what was, at the time, the longest voyage ever undertaken by a submarine. After the start of World War I, AE-2 was sent to German New Guinea with the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force, then spent time patrolling around Fiji. With no need for submarines in the Pacific or Indian theatres, AE-2 was towed to the Mediterranean, and arrived off Egypt in early 1915. The boat was assigned to the Dardanelles campaign, and was the first submarine to successfully penetrate the waterway and enter the Sea of Mamara. With orders to run amok inside Turkish territory, AE-2 operated for five days before mechanical faults forced her to the surface, where she was damaged by the torpedo boat Sultan Hizar. The submarine was scuttled by her crew, all of whom were captured. AE-2 was the only RAN vessel lost to enemy action during World War I. The Rami M. Co. Section Museum began searching for the wreck in 1995, and found it in 1998. After another expedition in 2008, the Australian and Turkish governments decided to leave the boat in place. Description: The E-Class was an enlarged version of the preceding D-Class submarine to accommodate an additional pair of broadside torpedo tubes. AE-2 was 181 feet long overall, had a beam of 22 feet 6 inches and a draft of 12 feet 6 inches. She displaced 750 long tons on the surface and 810 long tons submerged. The E-class boats had a designed diving depth of 100 feet, but the addition of watertight bulkheads, strengthened the hull and increased the actual diving depth to 200 feet. The crew consisted of 34 officers and enlisted men. The boat had two propellers, each of which was driven by an eight-cylinder 800-brake-horsepower diesel engine as well as a 420-brake-horsepower electric motor. This arrangement gave the E-class submarines a maximum speed of 15 knots while surfaced and 10 knots submerged. They carried approximately 40 long tons of fuel that gave them a range of 3,000 nautical miles at 10 knots while on the surface and 65 and me at 5 knots while submerged. AE-2 had four 18-inch torpedo tubes, one each in the bow and stern, plus two on the broadside, one firing to port and the other to starboard. The boat carried one spare torpedo for each tube. No guns were fitted. Construction and service, AE-2 was laid down on February 10, 1912 by Vickers Armstrong at Barrow and Furness, England, and launched on June 18, 1913. She was commissioned into the RAN at Portsmouth. England, on February 28, 1914 under the command of Lieutenant Henry H. G. D. Stoker, R.N. Accompanied by her sister boat, A.E. 1, the other of the RAND's first two submarines, A.E. 2 reached Sydney from England on May 24, 1914, manned by Royal Navy officers with a mixed crew of sailors drawn from the R.N. and RAN. The 13,000 nautical mile was, at the time, the longest submarine transit in history, and 60 of the 83 days of the voyage were spent at sea. Outbreak of World War I On the outbreak of World War I in September 1914, the two submarines were assigned to the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Forces at captured German New Guinea. During the capture of New Guinea, AE-1 disappeared without a trace. After the German surrender, AE-2 spent three weeks patrolling around Fiji with the battlecruiser Australia, then returned to Sydney on November 16 for maintenance and repairs. As AE-2 was the only submarine in the region and the German threat to Australia had disappeared, Stoker suggested that the boat be transferred to Europe. Both the RAN and the British Admiralty agreed, and on December 31, she left Albany with AIF Convoy 2. The submarine was the only warship assigned to the 16-ship convoy, as after the Battle of Cocos resulted in the destruction of the last active German ship in the Indian or Pacific Oceans, the Admiralty felt no need to protect shipping in the Indian Ocean. A2 arrived in Port Said, Egypt, on January 28, 1915, and was ordered to join the British Second Submarine Flotilla, and proceeded to take part in patrols in support of the Dardanelles campaign. Dardanelles Campaign. 
On March 10, the submarine ran aground off Mudros when returning from a patrol, as the harbor lights used to aid navigation had been switched off in AU-2's absence, which Stoker was not prepared for. The submarine was towed to Malta for repairs. AE-2 returned to operations in April. The aim of the Dardanelles campaign was to knock Germany's ally, the Ottoman Empire, out of the war and open up supply lines to the Russian Empire via the Black Sea. Attempts to open the Dardanelles through naval power were unsuccessful, three Allied battleships were sunk, and another three crippled, during a surface attack. Although the British submarine HMS AB-11 was able to enter the strait and sink the modernized ironclad Mesudai, two failed attempts to traverse the waterway and enter the Sea of Mamara resulted in the loss of HMS A-15 and the French submarine Sefer to mines and strong currents. Plans were made to capture the Turkish defenses by a land attack, with landings at Cape Hells and Anzac Cove. Despite the failures of E-15 and Sefer, Stoker planned his own attempt which was approved by the Allied fleet's commander, Vice Admiral John de Robeck. AE-2's first attempt was made early on April 24, but the boat only made its six nautical miles into the strait before the Ford hydroplane coupling failed, making the submarine impossible to control underwater and forced Stoker to retreat. At 2.30 on the following day, Stoker made a second attempt. The submarine was spotted by shore artillery and fired on from about 04.30. Stoker ordered the boat to dive to avoid the shells and to traverse the first minefield. AE-2 spent the next hour picking her way through the mine's mirroring cables, defensive wires that had been welded to the submarine in Malta prevented the mirroring cables from catching. By 06.00, AE-2 reached Chanik and proceeded to torpedo the Ottoman gunboat PK-7 while simultaneously taking evasive actions to avoid an enemy destroyer. The submarine ran aground beneath a Turkish fort, but the fort's guns could not be lowered enough to fire, and AE-2 was able to free herself within four minutes. Shortly after, the submarine's periscope was sighted by a Turkish battleship firing over the peninsula at the Allied landing sites. This prompted the ship to stop firing and withdraw. AE-2 advanced toward the Sea of Mamara, and at 8.30, Stoker decided to rest the boat on the ocean bottom and wait until nightfall before continuing. At around 21.00, AE-2 surfaced to recharge her batteries, and Stoker radioed his success back to the fleet. The first Allied vessel to transit the Dardanelles. Stoker had orders to generally run amok, and with no enemies in sight, he ordered the boat to enter the Sea of Mamara. Although the landing at Cape Hells was going well at the time Stoker reported in, the landing at Anzac Cove was not as successful, and the commander of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, Lieutenant General Sir William Birdwood was pushing for an embarkation of his troops. Some sources identify AE2 as one of the factors leading to Birdwood's decision to commit to the attack although the Australian War Memorial claims there is no real evidence to support this. The submarine made appearances across the Sea of Mamara over the following five days to give the impression of multiple boats, and several attacks against Turkish ships were made, although all failed because of increasing mechanical problems. News of the submarine's successes was spread to the soldiers ashore to improve morale. On April 29, A.E. Dumet E-14, one of several submarines that had entered the Dardanelles following the Australian boat's successful attempt. The submarines arranged a rendezvous for the next morning. When AE-2 reached the rendezvous point on April 30, smoke from the torpedo boat Sultan Hizar was sighted, so the submarine dove and moved to investigate. At 10.30, about a mile from the torpedo boat, AE-2 inexplicably rose and broke the surface. While diving to evade, the boat passed below her safe diving depth. Frantic attempts to correct this caused the submarine's stern to break the surface. Sultan Hizar immediately fired on the submarine, puncturing the pressure hull in three places near the engine spaces. Stoker ordered the boat's company to evacuate, and scuttled A2 at 10.45. All personnel survived the attack and were captured by Sultan Hizar, although four died from illness while in captivity. AE-2's achievements showed others that the task was possible, and within months Turkish shipping and lines of communication were badly disrupted, 
with supplies and reinforcements for the Turkish defense of Gallipoli forced to take underdeveloped overland routes. AE-2 was the only RAN vessel to be lost as a result of enemy action during World War I, and along with sister boat AE-1, the total of the RAN's operational losses in the war. Search and Discovery Since 1995, Sail Hasek Nukale, director of the Rami M. Co. Section Museum in Istanbul, had searched for the remains of AE-2. In 1996, he discovered what he believed to be the wreck lying in 86 meters of water. With the assistance of an Australian diving team, it was determined in October 1997 that the wreck was that of an old steamer. After a further thorough side scan sonar and mantometric survey of the reported scuttling site of the AE-2, Calais located the submarine in June 1998, lying in 72 meters of water. The wreck was first dived in July, while subsequent dives by an Australian team in October were able to confirm the wreck as being AE-2. The Australian government makes no claim to the shipwreck, and the submarine is not a war grave. On September 9, 2007, Australian and Turkish naval authorities began an undersea investigation to determine if AE-2 could be raised and restored. Such a plan would see the submarine transferred to a viewing tank at Anakail. As part of the inspection, a drop camera was inserted through the submarine's open hatch and into the control room. The survey team discovered that the wreck of AE-2 had suffered further damage since the 1998 inspection dives. The bow portion of the external hull casing had been destroyed and the rear of the conning tower now showed significant damage. Following an April 2008 workshop by the Turkish Institute of Nautical Archaeology and the Submarine Institute of Australia, the recommendation was made against raising the wreck. Moving the submarine to a viewing tank or alternately relocating the wreck to shallower water, were advised against because of the 80 Australian dollars a euro 100 million cost of such projects. Moving AE2 would also pose high risk to both the submarine and any vessels involved in the relocation. As well as potentially damaging the wreck, there is still an unexploded torpedo aboard. Instead, the workshop advised that the submarine be preserved through the use of sacrificial anodes to reduce corrosion, along with buoys and a surveillance system to mark the wreck and detect unauthorized access and potential damage. In March 2010, following an overhaul of the RAM Battle Honors System, AE-2 was retroactively awarded the Honors Rebel 1914, and Dardanelles 1915. A 17 day ROV exploration of the wreck by the Defense Science and Technology Organization is planned for June 2014. Planning and training for the expedition have been underway since 2004, including practice with a fabricated replica submarine in Corio Bay. During the exploration, sacrificial anodes will be fitted to the wreck, and the location will be marked by buoys to minimize damage by passing ships. Legacy In 2009, Edith Cowan University was commissioned by the National Archives of Australia to research and produce a computer game simulation called AE2 Commander, funded under the $15,000 Ian McLean Award. As well as being a realistic WWI submarine simulation, it is investigating how original archival sources can be used as part of computer simulation and serious gaming. An initial version of the AE2 Commander game and website went live on April 17, 2011. The game presents a combination of digitised documents from the collections of the National Archives of Australia and Australian War Memorial along with the embodiment of various archival sources in the setting and narrative of the game. Commemorative bronze plaques have been installed along sites associated with AE2's voyage from Australia to the Dardanelles. A defence housing estate under construction in Ermington, New South Wales on the site of a former naval ammunition store is to be named AE2. Citations References Barcerin, Vechi. Barcerin, Hattis. Beneath the Dardanelles, the Australian submarine at Gallipoli. Crow's Nest, New South Wales, Allen and Unwin. ISBN A 978-1-74175-595-4 Frame, Tom. No Pleasure Cruise, The Story of the Royal Australian Navy. Crow's Nest, New South Wales, Allen and Unwin. ISBN A 1-74114-233-4. 
OCLCA 55,980,812 Gillett, Ross. Australian and New Zealand Warships, 1914 Euro 1945. Sydney, Doubleday. ISBN A 0 868 24095 Harrison, A. N. BR 3043 The Development of HM Submarines from Holland No One to Porpoise. Submariners Association, Barrow and Furnace Branch. Admiralty. Retrieved September 20, 2013. A. Preston, Anthony. Submarine Warfare An Illustrated History. Heron Books. ISBN A 1571451722. OCLC A 40602917. A. Stevens, David. World War I. In Stevens, David. The Royal Australian Navy. The Australian Centenary History of Defence 3. South Melbourne, Victoria, Oxford University Press. ISBN A 0 19 555542 2. OCLC A 50418095. White, Michael. Australian Submarines. Past and present. In Oldham, Charles 100 Years of the Royal Australian Navy. Bondi Junction, New South Wales, Fair Cunt Media Group. OCLCA 741711418. Retrieved June 20, 2011. A, external links. RAN webpage for HMASA 2, AE2 Commemorative Foundation. AE2 1997 and 1998 Expeditions, History and Pictures History of AE2 and Expedition Notes on the Discovery and Verification of the Wreck. British and Australian Submarines in the Dardanelles, 1915 includes a full animation of the AE2's passage of the Dardanelles on 24 Euro April 29, 1915, based on Stoker's report of the voyage. AE2 Commander a Euro 3D simulation and 2D educational site developed by Edith Cowan University and the National Archives of Australia.